Alright, this is Observius bringing you guys a quick preview into the game Dark Orbit. So you can see, haven't played too far into it. It looks like VRU is winning this baseball thing. I have no idea what that is all about. But I'm going to go ahead and just quickly talk about exactly what all is in, in Dark Orbit and uh, what you can do in it. So as you can see, I am using my Kingdom Start War recorder to show you guys that this is in fact a browser-based MMO. There's fancy music and stuff, but sadly this recorder doesn't pick it up. So a little bit of fault on my part there. Um, might think of a workaround for later things, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So right now I'm just sort of flying around in the starting zone. What you're actually gonna see whenever you first log in is you're gonna see this whole fancy little screen with the start button being over here. And you'll see, you know, your random little info, you'll see a log saying everything that you've done. There's Galaxy Gates, Home, Hangar, Trade, Quest, Help, all sorts of stuff to try to confuse you. Currently we're on the home screen. There's little news and sales that you can look at over here. There's stuff about what's going on as far as baseball. Let's go ahead and look around at exactly all the little windows in Dark Orbit, as it is a rather extensive browser-based game, albeit one that, while free-to-play, has a very hard pay-to-play base. So I'm using the Liberator. This is the Starfighter you get if you do the tutorial and just kill stuff, or whatever the achievements say. Basic hit points and all that stuff, it gets stronger while I'm in the starting zones like I'm in right now. Looking at equipment, I got the LF2. Nothing really changed as far as what you start with from doing stuff like that. You can get extra drones that'll let you equip more stuff. You can have up to two configurations, so later on when I look at generators, see how these give me shields. Uh, if I can actually scroll down, it'll give me a certain amount of shield strength. And so some people carry like all of shields and then someone else will take a configuration of all speed. So when they want to move around places, they'll take a whole bunch of speed. When they're ready to fight, they'll switch their configuration to shields and stuff like that. So you can see over here that fancy little V icon that means you had to buy it with your Iridium. And I'll get to that in a second. So here's all the different ships you can buy in the game. Just quickly trying to run through all the features as there's a lot of features to cover in Dark Orbit. Um, you start off with just being able to use the Phoenix, which is basically a pod. It's free. You can always switch to it if need be. If you lose your ship, you can get that instead of repairing it. Then there's various other ships that you can buy. You can see various hit points and stuff like that. What's interesting about the Lenov is that in maps 3, 1 to 3, 4, because I'm VRU, um, as uh, there's three different factions, VRU, Mars something, and Earth something, and so the dash ones through dash four are like the starting ones and then the three indicator is of uh, what faction they're in although there's like x zones and stuff like that but i'll get there when i do so you can see over here that as a snoob ship it's stronger in the beginning areas there's other stuff fancier fighters fancier cargo space you can see how much generator slots how much cargo it can hold hit points stuff like that um... actually i don't have the liberator I mean, I don't have the Lenov. I have the Liberator, which is this. So, never mind. I have this. Not this. Oh, well. Um, but, as you can see, the biggest ship that you can get for credits costs 200,000 credits. And, you know, it's all fancied and decked out. It's like a Star Cruiser or Battle Cruiser or something like that. But, mainly, the Vengeance is pretty much a better version of the Big Boy Actually, it's a better version than Nostromo, but it's mostly better than the Big Boy if we look at the quick comparison. The Big Boy has 15 generators, but the Vengeance has 10 lasers, it has 2 extras, the Big Boy has 3, 900 for rockets, 800 for rockets, but it has like 60,000 more hit points, and it only has, oh no, it has 300 more cargo, and it's faster than the Big Boy by a good 100 speed. So, Vengeance is comparable to the big boy if not better and that's just as a fighter the goliath which is pretty much the be all ship that you want to get is of course very well it's like a buffed up big boy so fifteen generators fifteen lasers compared to the big boy seven nine hundred in rockets sixteen hundred in rockets it has double no it has higher than double the amount of hit points it has the same amount of extras but it also has about eight hundred more cargo space and it's 40 speed faster than the big boy, so the Vengeance is still faster than the Goliath, as it should be. So, random little ship comparisons. Basically, you want to like stick with your Liberator, unless you want to jump up to the big boy um, for as long as possible. And if your ship gets destroyed, they can always jump over to the Phoenix. 
um, if need be, to save money on buying a new ship, as you have to pay Iridium to repair your ship. And Iridium is kind of like the currency that you buy with real money. Although later on I'll show like how you can get it in-game via fancy boxes and stuff. So that's the ships tab. Uh, drones, as I said, they give you like an extra equipment slot. People use them to put extra lasers or generators or stuff on, I believe. I don't own one, as you can tell. I'd have 185,000 credits. But um, the um, Iridium one is 15,000 Iridium, but it has two slots instead of one. So pretty useful if you can get that later. I'm going to go briefly look at weapons. For the most part, oh, whoops, I went all the way back to equipment. Let me go back and look at weapons real quick. So, yeah, you start off with, like, the LF-1. You can get a fancy cannon, and it'll do, see so up to 60 damage per round without counting your ammo. This one only does up to 40. And then the LF-2 does up to 100. And then the LF-3 does up to 150 without adding ammo damage and stuff like that. And then, of course, you can launch rockets. So there's the fancy rocket launcher right here, the Hellstorm launcher. And then there's the upgraded one, um, which makes it fire up to five, ro five rockets at the same time. That's pretty cool. This one lets you fire up to three. And then we can go ahead and quickly look at ammunition. So, various ammunitions, low capacity battery, it just says low efficiency for a low price. This one's half uranium each. It does double the laser damage per round. This one does triple the laser damage per round. The SAB-50 does shield absorbing ammo. Whoa. I guess that just quickly takes out shields. And then there's various upgraded rockets. Just sort of looking at the game with this video, trying not to get too in-depth into Dark Orbit, as that would take way too much time. So quickly looking at the generators, you can see, aha, I can quickly buy this cheapo speed generator for two extra speed, um, etc. Up to a plus five speed generator, although you could save up your Iridium and get plus ten speed generator and be uber fast. Or you can save up and get Awesome Shield, which will give you shield strength and reduce damage while that shields up, etc., and so on and so forth. And that is all she wrote. So you want to throw up generators to make yourself more tanky with shields, as you do have shields and hit points. Um, I'm going to quickly look at extras. This is just like the miscellaneous stuff, miscellaneous stuff. So like you need log disks for various amounts of researches and buildings and stuff. This repair bot basically repairs XHP per minute. I have like an auto repair program that'll do that. This one says repairs up to 20,000 HP per minute. So when you have high HP ships, like uh, having a good repair bot, or, like saves your downtime for recovering from fighting off those bad guys or PVPing. This makes your lo rocket launch faster. This one makes your cooldown from mines and items made from mines go down. Then there's cloaking mods, which I am going to get to in a second. I believe this is cloak. Yep. Ship stays cloaked until your first attack. So this costs 500 Iridium, but basically what this does is it lets you, as a new player, roam around in the higher level zones, and as long as you don't fire and they don't notice the fact that you're moving, so there's like a silhouette or a way you can detect people, um, you can pretty much spend that 500 Iridium on a cloak and then get the Iridium via boxes as you can still harvest while uh, cloaked and be sneaky like that. But there's all sorts of miscellaneous stuff, like automatic drone repairs, uh, 20 drumps to, whoa, cool, a jump drive, basically. Um, this thing is a automatically reloads rocket launcher with specific type. Um, stuff like that, random little extras. This is, you can sell ore no matter what orbit you're in. Why waste time going to the space station? So this drone basically lets you sell ore while you're away. And let's go ahead and quickly look at boosters and designs and try to get off of this big ol' hangar map. So, boosters, pretty simple. You spend real-life money, or real-life Iridium, or fake Iridium, I should say, and this will give you plus 10% EP, which I think is experience. Yeah. And then this one gives you plus 10% honor, and this one gives you plus shield power, etc. It just makes you a little bit more tougher, temporary potion stuff you can buy. So that's the real quick overview of all the different tabs, trying to explain the game as if someone just starts Dark Orbit, it can be pretty scary. Uh, I have a little message saying I can purchase equipment or pay with Iridium, stuff like that. Basically, in the trade spot, you can look up and see, oh, hey, look, there's auctions for stuff. 
And so there'll be little stuff that you can buy and you can auction for, well, stuff, bid, I should say, etc. and so on. Go, hmm, I want to place a bid for this item and I'll bid X. I really don't want to spend Iridium, though, bidding at the moment, but you can see that, hey, ooh, wow, look, Goliath for 80000 to buy right now, but let's say I want to bid um, my 4000 something. It's probably not going to get accepted, but you can bid and buy directly as well here. I'm going to go ahead and quickly look down here at completed, and you can see, aha, this person bought this, this person bought that one, this person got this thing, and so on. Anyways, trade, pretty simple. It's an auction house, basically. And let's go ahead and go to the Skylab, which I was working on, as you can tell. Ah, all these upgrades are done from a long time ago. As uh, I haven't been able to get into dark orbit the past two days or so. But basically, these things harvest stuff, and you upgrade it to make more stuff, and then you convert it into weapons and thingies. Uh, that's the long story. So, like I have a level 1 collector thingy, hmm, 566, Endurium, Promedium, whatever. Well, I'll look at all that stuff I have. So let's go ahead and start building that. That'll make me harvest faster. Basically, um, if you first get to this screen, since I realize I'm kind of blowing through all this, you're going to have stuff that'll generate ore for you without having to go in-game and mine it and transfer it over here, as you can transport stuff to your ship or to the thingy with the transport module. Um, but once you have all that generating ore, you'll see, oh, I have 105,000 whatevers. I have 23,000, 23,000, 104,000 um, with 105,600 max. And then I have 22 promitted made, 22 duranium made, no xenomits made, 528 promerium made, but no sepram made. And so the whole idea is to upgrade your collector so you can, well, do more with it. So like, oh, hi, I will start upgrading you if I can. Yep, level upgraded started. In order to do this, I need 2,000 something. Why not? Let's go ahead and build that. And as you can see, oh, not enough energy. Where do I get energy? Oh, the solar module. I need to upgrade it. Solar module, basically everything costs a certain amount of power. So 16 right here, 16 right here, 16 right here, 16 right here, 16, 16, 16, 0. So as you build on to your Skylab, it'll get more and more advanced. Things will get added on and stuff. And basically what you do with all of these fancy, fancy resources, as well as there's a help button helping you out there, is you go to the tech center, as I've been talking way too much on that thing, and you can pretty much just start researching stuff. So like, say, Energy Leech. That looks pretty cool. Um, turns out I need five log disks and 500 Seprom, as well as credits, so I'd have to buy that. I think I made everything that I can make with just straight up um, with just straight up materials from the station. But as you can see I need to get stuff that'll let me make Seprom. This one requires 500, 250 Seprom and two log disks. So bad mistake on my part not having all those weapons and stuff made or having the stuff that could be made straight from what I had instantly. But basically what these are, they let you te temporarily use abilities and things, which should be here somewhere. Let's try to find it. Chat, user, star system, log, outfit, help, settings, trade raw materials, jump, refining. I don't find... Oh, here we go. No. Lasers. I already seen all this. Special ammo by now. Tech items. Special capability. What does that do? I don't know what that does. Alright. Hmm. Well, let's go back and actually look at the thingy. It says... If I reopen the tech center... How do I use the items? How many can be produced? la da da da, -da. Where do they go? They appear in a special box on this face map once they've been manufactured. Click on the tech item symbol to use the item. Alright. So we gotta find the tech item symbol. Oh ha. There we go. And as you can see I have a precision target already. So let's go ahead and fire on this poor strooner. Firing and stuff like that is made simple by just 
hitting the key that you want to use to fire it with, either by clicking it or not. That's of course the most basic NPC to kill. You get honor and stuff like that to help you level. Um, but alright, that was me killing the Struner. Now I can go ahead and uh, use the Precision Targeter, which is just going to improve my accuracy um, to, well, get more accuracy and have fun with it. As you can tell, I haven't really planned this Dark Orbit bit too well, as it's been just vast for Dark Orbit. All sorts of stuff, and at the same time, not much you can do. So, on the map you see in the bottom right, you can see little red dots moving, and that's enemy NPCs. Bigger red dots would be people of the enemy faction. And so, trying to run and get to it, but this... I'm not going to get to talk to you guys about mystery boxes or bonus boxes or whatever they're called. Alright, let's go ahead and activate the precision targeter. And now I have better accuracy for a certain amount of time. Which you can tell because it's glowing. And we'll keep glowing for some time. Now you can see that there is wreckage left whenever you kill something. Uh, orange wreckage is yours. Not so orange wreckage is this. So, right, so this little fun spinning box is a mystery box. And what it does is it gives you random extra ammo, iridium, um, galaxy gate generator pieces, and things of that nature. So I was talking earlier about the stealth detection item. You can pretty much just um, buy some stealth detection and then without leaving stealth, farm up another 500 iridium and then some to compensate for the iridium that you did just spend. So I was quickly showing you guys the precision targeter. It's still active and will be for some time. There's the automatic repair bot repairing up what little health I lost. I'm going to go ahead and start auto pathing over there. Keep half an eye on the screen. That's the tech center really quick. You research stuff in the Skylab to build stuff in the tech center, although really you're just using it to get to set prom. Um, you can have clans in the game. Uh, if I can get to the clan screen, United You Are Strong. You can, you know, join a clan, hit that X button to try to close this message. Something that's interesting about Dark Orbit is that it will, like, refresh the page whenever you try to do it. Here you can apply at a clan. You can see the list of clans to apply at. Um, you can make a clan for 300,000 credits. Make a clan tag and name. Once you have a clan, you can look at the clan stuff and the company. Um, or actually, the company is VRU. So... I'm with Venus Resources Limited. The other enemy factions are Mars Mining Operations and Earth Industries. Whoa! Bonus boxes galore! Look at that. Gonna go ahead and grab this stuff. Extra energy for the Galaxy Gate Generator. Good, I need to show you guys that later. 500 credits. Interesting that that's... What is this? Whoa, apparently I found like an Easter egg thingy for 15 Zomit or whatever. Very rare mineral. I believe... If I can... Oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Fireworks, rockets, awesome. So I need to be keeping an eye out for Easter eggs since the spring events have started, like that space ball event. Uh, I'm going to be mainly picking up bonus boxes, apparently, as I try valiantly to take all of these fireworks stuff, because clearly I am playing the game while doing a preview, and that means ignoring the little bitty NPCs and stuff. And I've actually gone off the map. And as you can see, whenever you go off the map, you will take radiation damage and get warnings and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just grab those extra rockets. Is there a firework somewhere? Rocket. I'm thinking the firework would be a... Rocket to fire. Lasers. Rockets. Rocket whiz. The PLD-8. I uh, don't see it. Oh, well. Special ammo. Maybe that's it. ACM, EMP, SAB. Nope. I don't see it. Oh well. Let's randomly shoot rockets there. Oh. That shot a firework. Hmm. Laser, 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 laser. I'm trying to find out where in the world that firework slot is. Oh well. Let's kill another Struner with a fireworks. That looks pretty fun. Oops. Wrong button. Yay. Fireworks. Anyways, so you can change your faction here. If you're not content with Venus, you can go join Earth or Mars. You can see the total honor for the company. 
as well as ships destroyed, how many members there are in the company, its ranking, and stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and quickly click on that Iridium tab, and oh, hey, look, you can get Iridium for money. Yeah, that's right, you can get a premium account, get free ship repairs, get money off drone repairs, get cargo bay extensions, automatic refining, you can buy Iridium directly, you can add on balance and exchange. This is basically where you spend your real life money. I'm going to go ahead and look at quests real quick. Here you can grab different quests. I've pretty much done a lot of the mining ones and just haven't done the ones that are on the next map where the NPCs actually aggro you um, by just sort of running around and playing it safe. Um, but Aside from just doing quests for honor, experience, and the odd iridium, you can also take challenges like destroy as many strooners as possible in one minute. A strooner being a random NPC that's on this starting map. And on the second one, the navigator challenge is you have to fly to four different coordinates within a certain amount of time. And then there's occasionally special events, which there are none at the moment, besides, you know, the space ball thing, but that's faction based. And then, of course, there's a help screen. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Galaxy Gates thing to show you guys something that's pretty cool. Here for the Galaxy Gates thing, you are, there's four gates showing, like the Omega Gate, the Y Gate, Beta, Alpha, where you have to try to construct a gate using stuff taken away from the Galaxy Gate generator. And you can see the percent odds of getting that as you pull out more and more pieces. They usually cost some 500 ir iridium, I think, per draw, but you can occasionally find free extra energy and draw for free. But you'll find ammo, you'll find apparently more ammo, and apparently it's only 100 um, iridium to play the rates. So right now there's like a 67% chance to get ammo, there's a 12% chance to get the Xenomet, there's 3% chance to get a repair card, 13% chance to get a part, 4% chance to get extra hit points, and 1% chance to get extra log discs. And you can of course pay in more stuff to get better multiplayer, multiplier, multipliers. And of course, once the gate is fully built, you can hit the prepare jump icon, uh, button. As you can tell, I only have like one thing in each one because this is a newish account and it would take me some time to actually fully construct the gate. And then of course you can go ahead and look at your pilot bio and see, oh yes, I have no info shown. I have no fancy face. My player activity is only, wow, I only have three hours logged onto this game? That's not possible. Like, there's no way. I've done a lot in this game. Hmm. Maybe they mean today. I don't know. But while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and show off that, hey, there's this fancy ring circle thingy. Mabobber. And so basically for the ring circle Mabobber, what it does is it lets you jump to another zone. You can see over here on the mini-map, if you are at full screen, that... I am currently at 3-1. I'm going to go ahead and go to 3-2. And to do that, I need to hit the jump button where I need to find it. Jump. There it is. And as you can see, it gets all spinny. It says activating when you have game sounds turned on. And then it loads you into map 3-2. And there's a demilitarized zone around every single little portal. So that way you don't, of course, die. So I'm going to go ahead and just wander along, see how far I can get before I lose my let off as I'm confident I will in fact die. And you can see I have a little hurry up icon on this and it's just basically timing how long it takes for you to do that quest. You don't actually have to do anything. But if you look on the minimap there's a little like four little friendly guys over here. There's Lordicas or whatever which one just shot it at me. But is it turning around to attack me? Might as well go deal with it. And so you have to click on them to deal with it, fire the rocket, and try to kill them without dying. And as you can tell, I probably should have spent some more of my credits to take them out. But you'll get missions to kill Lordicas and stuff like that. Here's a random little extra generator with another generator in the corners. Easter eggs always fun though to take too. Grab me some credits. I'll show you guys exactly why you want to buy a cloaking field in a second. Just grabbing these extra bonus boxes. Got me 20 more Iridium. And let's go ahead and jump. I need to be level 9 for the jump, sadly. Hmm, that's new. Uh, do 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 do. Lordica firing at me. Firing random fireworks and stuff. The Lordica spinning around in circles to try to throw off its aim. Why not throw another rocket? 
Rockets are clearly something that you can spam around here, as I do have 54 rockets. So that's pretty fun. But overall, I think this video is going way too long and not really showing off exactly what you can do. It's fairly basic and complex at the same time. Oh, crap. PvP! Ah, I'm dead. Oh, phew. I somehow outrun that. Ran that. But this is why you don't leave the noob area unless you're ready. Because you will die. And so repair necessary. And yay, it's free because, yeah. Um, so I think it's my first death. But people will come into your... Um, people will come into your zones aside from the starting area, although they will come into the starting area too, and just decide to kill you. And so once you die and you respawn, you'll be like, aha, I freely repaired, and now I have to repair all of my HP. So my bot is slowly repairing myself all the way back to 16,800, which is why you want to pay for better repair bots. Although, since it's a newbish ship, it'll only take me a few minutes to repair, so... Briefly got a look at Dark Orbit. Sadly, I died, but I want to buy stealth real quick, or hangar, and show you guys what all stealth does, as far as how fun that is, just because I was going to buy stealth anyways. Where is that thingy? Overview, I think. Equipment. There we go. Do do do. No. Already forgotten exactly where the stealth icon is. It's an extras. Do 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 do. There's the cloak mod. Buy now. So, cloaking device purchased. And then if we look at me, suddenly I'm all invisible. Did out. And I should be able to stay stealth unless I fire a shot, which will let me be able to not get attacked by Lordikins, not get attacked by players unless they are close enough to fire at me, and just overall have fun. But I'm going to go ahead and try for now to get back to that ship thing. I'm going to pause recording and resume when I've jumped. Alright, I haven't jumped yet, but I figured I might as well ramble on a little bit more and talk about how something that I find kind of off or bad about Dark Orbit is that in this game you usually have to back when I played it then and playing it now you make a lot of your money and ammo off of just grinding bonus boxes you can kill ships for ore and then sell it at the base whenever you get a full inventory and that's one way to make money but then you still need to farm up your iridium to actually get to end game Although you can get a decent split ship, I guess, with just credits. Um, it's just uh, how stuff takes. Like this guy right here has a big boy and he has four drones. But I can go ahead and start jumping. Activate it and all of that. And let's go ahead and try to find that scary ship that was over there. Let's actually try, I guess, traveling up to this top zone and see if we run across anybody. Now, what you will find in the later zones is that people will be camping gates. Like, it'll be safe for you at the gate, but if you take a step out of the gate, you will in fact die. So as you can see, I'm flying by those Lordicans and not really taking any damage from them, because they're not firing at me, because they can't see me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get up there, if I can, get to this little spot. As you can see, 3-2 is a much smaller map than 3-1. Or three, yeah, three one I guess. Jumping and I'm now in three three, and now there's more dons and stuff like that. It gets all scary, and um, three different portals to go through. And so here you pretty much are just running along, trying to find fun places to go to. Naturally, if you're going to be stealthy, you should probably get some speed generators. I'm still using the starting generators because I'm a cheapo, and that's just what I do. But as far as the first look goes, it's not that complex. You kill stuff, and then you grind, and you get bigger, and eventually you are able to PvP. But for the sake of this, uh, okay, looks like that 
other blue ship on the minimap is also stealthed. Yeah, he just flew past me. Um, so he took that Easter egg. But, um, I don't know. I tried playing more and more of the game, and I've been finding that basically it doesn't really change that much. So I probably won't be playing Dark Orbit continuously past this preview, which probably discredits a whole bunch of my stuff. But I just haven't found it all that interesting. I mean, you can have fun PvPing and all that, but the way you grind unless you spend money on the game is by running around and picking up boxes or by trying to survive versus the PvP stuff and do quests. So, like, there's that guy over there. Bad fellow, bad fellow. I'm now on map 2-4, which means that I'm now in an enemy zone. Uh, Earth's, I think. Only one way to find out for sure, though, and that's just to go ahead and start flying straight up and see if I run into any enemies. Nope. Actually, that guy's friendly. Oh, yeah. There's a guy getting chased back into our zone by an enemy Goliath. As you can see, lots of ore to mine. I'll go ahead and mine some more, I guess. The better the ore, the longer it's going to take to mine it. As long as you don't start mining another ore, picking up another box, you can move around and you'll still pick it up. Terbium's actually decently worth stuff, and Promethium and Uvium, whatever, are also rather good. And oh, hey, look! It's the enemy gate. Can I jump here? Nope, I need to be level 13 plus in order to jump over here. So, if I move around enough, they can eventually notice me here. Ouch. Like I said, ow. If you stand on top of them, they can see you. And that's why you don't stand on top of enemy ships while stealthed. Ouch. And so, once again, I go ahead and go straight back into the repair. Well, I think I've droned on long enough about Dark Orbit. It's a fancy space game. It wasn't that detailed or fancy, but yes, you run around, you kill stuff, you pick up boxes, you upgrade your ship, like I could go and buy a big boy when I hit 200,000 credits, that's my plan. Save up my Iridium and get level 3 lasers. And, um... Then go on from there. But, just a grindy sci-fi MMO thing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry it went on so long. And, um, yeah, that was just a preview into Dark Orbit. This is Observius, ending recording.